Everyone, it's John from Ride Upstate, and today I'm going to be reacting to a video from Future Proof titled Why Uber Eats Sucks for Everyone. All right, let's dig in. Meal kit delivery services are pretty normal nowadays, but of course, people have taken this way too. All right, first off, can we back this up here? What is this janky looking phone case that he's using? Couldn't you get a better looking phone case for this video? A anyway, here we go. Delivery services are pretty normal nowadays, but of course, people have taken this way too far. I mean, honestly, we've got people ordering things like bottled water or apparently 30 to 40 pounds of chocolate. This is so true. If you watch any of the delivery channels on YouTube, and if you're a delivery driver yourself, you know that you've gone and done a trip, and it's been for one item. And it's crazy because you know that you're getting paid 5 or $6 for that single item. So imagine what the customer must have paid chocolate but that's not the weirdest thing about these services the crazy thing is how popular they are despite how obviously terrible they are for everyone involved truth now even before lockdowns uber eats in particular witnessed massive success yep. this isn't particularly surprising considering how internet centric our culture has become we're used to having quick and easy access to whatever we want we and uber eats at all are just the natural evolution of that trend and of course as you can likely guess covid did nothing but wonders for this business model very true during that first year of lockdowns 380,000 restaurants signed up for uber eats now this is an interesting statistic 380,000 restaurants signed up for uber eats i wonder how accurate that statistic is because there are restaurants that were put on uber eats and they were put on doordash without actually signing up so who knows maybe this is actual restaurant registrations where people said hey i want to be on the platform but you and i both know that we have gone to a restaurant before they have these purchasing cards and that restaurant does not need to officially be on the platform in order for someone to order from it 45 million people started using the service and the company's annual revenue jumped from 1.9 billion dollars in 2019 to 4.8 billion dollars 45 million people started using the service which led to this massive increase in income and yet uber eats still isn't profitable in 2020 that's more than double but weirdly enough despite these massive sales dollar, dollar Uber bills, Eats is actually losing money right. in order to stay competitive they deliver food at a loss and are expected to continue losing money until at least 2024 now while this okay you and i both know that this is the case now deliver at a lost at delivering at a loss i guess if you factor in all the r d and everything like that they're technically delivering at a loss this is why we're not going to see our rates go up despite the fact that fuel prices are going up uber eats it, they'll lose even more money if they increase our rates as drivers and it's pretty sad when you think about it i think when i started driving for uber as a, a little over three years ago three and a half years ago gas prices were half what they are now just about half and rates haven't gone up and i don't expect them to go up either 
sounds objectively terrible, this is actually a relatively common situation amongst these tech startups. Yep. The idea here is that if they operate at a loss long enough, they'll secure enough customers to starve out all the other companies and become the king of delivery services. Then at that point, they can rack up all the prices and no one will have anything to say about it. Right, they'll rack up the prices and still not increase payouts to drivers. Now I know you've probably all shed many a tear here for the Silicon Valley startup CEOs that are probably struggling through these hard times. I cry into my pillow every night for Tony and Dara. For restaurants, Uber Eats has become the very literal definition of a necessary evil. Mm. Because of the takeover of meal delivery, they can't survive without the business they bring in. Right. However, they pay a commission fee of up to 30% on every order. This doesn't include the one-time fee just to get on the app in the first place and the fact that they probably have to do this with two or three other apps as yeah. well. Most of these restaurants yeah, your your local restaurant is paying so much more for your business if you're using Uber Eats or DoorDash. And oftentimes, you can get to the restaurant and back faster than these delivery services can. I guarantee you, if you call into your local restaurant, see, I'm making that, I guess maybe we should be doing this now because we use cell phones. If you call into your local restaurant and order out and come and pick it up, they will love you because they're not having to pay the commission. You'll pay less and more than likely you'll get your food faster and hotter. Restaurants are just barely staying afloat with the lockdown as it is. Getting almost a third of the price dinged off of the <laughs> bulk of their orders can be a death blow for many independent restaurants. <laughs> One of my favorite local Indian restaurants confided to me that through Uber Eats, they have like three to four meals that barely break even. Mm. Another component is all of that extra packaging, which they didn't have to pay for previously. Not only is this an additional cost to them, but it's a huge problem for the planet. I yeah, so here's, here, here's a thing that is something that we all need to consider when it comes to getting takeout. The more we order takeout, the more trash we're generating. And even though there are recycling programs here in the U.S., all you need to do is do a little bit of research and realize that actually most of that recycling doesn't get recycled because it's too expensive and there's just too much to do anything with. I actually made a whole video about this on my other channel, and this was the garbage that That's just a lot of I trash. created. From now, when you just think of the problems of Uber Eats, you probably imagine the drivers. The yep. struggles of so-called gig workers is well established. One estimate is that drivers can expect to make eight to twelve dollars an hour after expenses yeah. like gas and maintenance. That's and this is why it's so important to cherry pick and not just take any kind of order, especially now that gas prices have gone up so much and they'll probably continue to go up past $5 a gallon, you need to start cherry picking. Don't take long deliveries and don't take lower amounts. In fact, I think if your minimum was $5, you probably need to bump it up by a dollar now if you're doing delivery. It's not even minimum wage in many states. No. Some drivers have even taken legal action against the company for exploitation and unfair dismissals. Basically, these are just contract workers, which means no health care, yep. no insurance, no right. pension, yep. no nothing. Just to make sure that your curry arrives as cheaply as possible. This late night double mukbang of stupidity <laughs> ends with the bill in front of the consumer. There is literal memes about how expensive yep. Uber Eats meals can be. And sadly, they're not even that far from the truth. By the exact same meal through Uber Eats, I end up paying 60% more for one friggin' meal. So that's where our pay comes from, right? That 60% more that the customer is paying, that's where our pay comes from. This guy's paying 60% more before he even puts a tip on there. So more than likely, he's paying 80 
to 90% more. I, it wouldn't surprise me if some people are paying 110 to 120 percent more. And that's if I'm just being totally stingy and I don't even tip the driver. If you're not tipping your driver, people, you you should just tip your driver. <laughs> Thank you. I don't even know why. Do I have to say this? Yes, you Look, do. I know yes, you do have to why say Uber it. eats. See, this is a big. <laughs> this is the thing. Uh, this is why when Para came out, it changed the game. Because knowing whether or not you were being tipped, knowing whether or not this person was just, like he said, being stingy, not appreciating the fact that someone is delivering food to them, this is why it became such a game changer and why people continue to use it. And people are constantly trying to figure out, okay, is there a hidden tip on this and things like that. We as drivers, whether it's rideshare, whether it's food delivery, package delivery, whatever the case may be. We as drivers know that there is going to be a percentage of people out there who are not going to tip just because they don't think we deserve it or they think that this isn't a real job. But there is something else that we need to keep in mind as well. I think at times I can understand if someone is at home and they're sick and they honestly don't have the means to tip and they don't have the means to have something delivered to them. Maybe they're out of food. But that should be like less than 1% of the people out there who are ordering, maybe at the most 2%. But I think you know, as well as I know, that probably 30 to 60% of the people on a per given day, don't tip when they're ordering. And that is just uncalled for. But we have to start thinking about what we're willing to sacrifice for this illusion of convenience. Yeah, I'll tell you what's being sacrificed is humanity. Our humanity is being sacrificed. All you need to do is look on TikTok, look on Instagram, look on YouTube, and you can see that the drivers aren't treated like they're real people and sometimes the dry some drivers don't treat the customers like they're real people we're losing our humanity in the midst of all this now of course there is definitely a place for meal delivery options yeah for but sure. in general it's a good idea to phone avoid again. meal delivery services as much as possible instead you may have to use this thing i know God forbid, it's called a telephone and you have to call your local restaurant <laughs> and then go and pick it up yourself. Your wallet and the restaurant will thank you. So I'm interested to know what you think about this video. You got my reaction. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you'd like me to react to videos like this a little bit more, hit the like button and uh, leave a comment below. You can find a link to the full video in the description below. I hope you'll check it out and let them know that I sent you. Thanks for watching. My name is John from Ride Up State, reminding you that just because you're in a small market doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.